SHA process have these four major steps. Actually, they are five here, but actually you can classify them into four major steps. Selection of site is already the the available kind of step. So, we already know that uh, when we are doing PSHA, this is our site. So, the ma major four steps are these ones. First is to identify all critical tectonic features. Those can be active faults, those can be some source zones, an area which you have many past earthquakes, but you do not know why. So, you construct it as a you model it as a source zone or area source. So, the seismic sources identification is the first step. Second step is to define the seismicity of each seismic source, how active or how less active that source is. Obviously, that should affect the hazard, right. So, PSHA accounts for that. And for quantifying the seismicity, we have that magnitude recurrence relationships or MR relationships. So, in this step, we construct MR relationship for each seismic source, whether it is a line source or an area source. Third step is the selection of a suitable GMP or attenuation model. They can be more than one also. So, you may use three GMPs for a particular seismic source and then give them 33 percent weightage each, right? Or uh, for example, you are not sure that which GMP is more suitable. Uh, so, you can select more than one and set their relative weightages based on how much confident you are uh, that a particular GMP is suitable for your specific site. right? So, it is I just want to say that it is not just one GMP, you consider more than one GMPs and then the prediction is normalized or you can take weighted average for the final prediction. And last step is uh, using the MR relationship and GMP step 2 and 3. These two relationships are then uh, you can say analyzed, uh, integrated actually and then finally, you uh, get the ground motion parameter or actually hazard curve at your site. Right? So, three curves MR curve, GMP and then finally, the output hazard curve. Right? So, it is like I will show you how, but you just MR curve and GMPs are analyzed together to construct a third curve which is the hazard curve and you do it for each site if you want to make a map and just one site if you are performing the site specific PSHA. Right? So, this is the, the pictorial summary of all these four steps. First is sources some can be area sources, some can be fault sources uh, which are close to your site. If you are doing it for one particular site, then you can identify like this. If you want to do it for whole study area, then you can just uh, take a buffer zone. For example, if this is my study area, I will make a buffer zone like this and in all of this whole region, if, if there are any faults or any area sources which can govern the seismicity in my study area, I will consider all of them. Right? When we do the PSHA of whole Pakistan, we considered like 200 or 300 kilometer buffer zone outside the administrative boundary of Pakistan. So, any seismic source which is even outside the administrative boundary that can affect the hazard value inside the country. Right? So, we consider it for whole region including the buffer zone outside the boundary also. Obviously, the this is one challenge as I have explained earlier that delineation or marking of uh, area sources is one major step in PSHA. So, it should be done with uh, great care the historical seismicity is one thing, but the tectonic setting and uh, seismotectonic features is another thing which should be considered. right? So, for example, if you 
if this is one uh, area and uh, this is a particular fault line which is passing but we don't know exactly the location and properties of those fault line but we know that there can be a fault line here because a lot of earthquakes are spread along this length right so you, we may make this as one source then this region one source then this one source right so we consider both historical seismicity pattern in how the earthquakes are spread in a particular region and then how the seismo tectonic features are passing or the their location and their other things so i'll show you some example sources in existing pshs studies how they made make it right considering both of these things this is a decision made by hazard analyst so they they should not be too large they should not be too small they should reflect the areas which have almost constant seismicity because we assume that once we make a source it will have a constant uh, seismicity because the earthquakes may occur randomly within that earthquake zone right so this is one uh, one area which uh, is actually responsible for different pshs results every time because each study may delineate the seismic sources based on the understanding available at that time but this is all about area sources if if a particular fault is well established there are several faults in pakistan which are well established we know that they are there we know that from where they actually pass their coordinates and everything is well established their faulting mechanism is well established slip rates everything we have estimates for that also so in those cases we may explicitly model those faults as line sources but for other earthquake which cannot be associated with any particular fault then we use area sources to model them so the summary is that each past earthquake is somehow accounted in future prediction right so it is either part of a area source or it is either part of a line source right so each earthquake is somehow Uh, associated with a source second step is recurrence establish this kind of a relationship for each source and this is a relationship between what magnitude and the number of earthquakes greater than that magnitude right so if if we can uh, for example this is my three seismic source a b and c i will count the earthquakes in a in last 100 years i will count the earthquakes in b and then count earthquakes in c let's say a a's number is 10000 b is 5000 and then c is 1000 obviously source a is more active right so the magnitude recurrence relationship is a graph between magnitude and how frequently that magnitude is being exceeded in past data so this is a graph made from past data number of earthquakes greater than a particular magnitude is on y axis so if it is magnitude 4 this number is what number of earthquakes more than magnitude 4 if this is magnitude 5 this dot is actually this number on y axis is the number of earthquakes in that source more than 5 and obviously if i go to more and more higher magnitude the number of earthquakes should reduce because high magnitude earthquakes large magnitude earthquakes are rare low magnitude earthquakes are more and when we ex when we go for example when we look at the historical data uh if the number of magnitude 4 earthquakes or greater if it is like 10000 for m4 for m5 it will be 1000 so they are like because you know from magnitude 4 to magnitude 5 the shaking increase by 10 times and that same trend you will also look in in the historical data that if you have magnitude 4 plus earthquake 10000 magnitude 5 plus may be 1000 magnitude 6 plus may be 100 right and so they exponentially decrease 
when you increase the magnitude for each source so therefore you sometime take log of that number on y axis so in that case the line is linear otherwise it would have looked like this exponential decrease right so sometimes we make log of y axis and then so the line becomes linear so each point on this curve is one one you can say information about uh, the magnitude 4 plus earthquakes magnitude 5 magnitude 6 and then you construct the best fit line this becomes your magnitude recurrence relationship right and obviously the last point will tell you that what is the maximum magnitude this earthquake uh, this source have produced in past right so if i go for m6 uh, m7 plus i may get 10 m8 plus 1 approximately right so this is just dummy data right and for m9 plus 0 so this will just terminate at magnitude 8 because there is no earthquake occurred in past let's say 100 years or 200 years for which this data is available which is more than magnitude let's say 9 right so it will terminate so imagine that one source have a magnitude recurrence relation look like this another may look like this another may look like this so this line actually is telling you how active or less active that source is the slope of that line and then the last point of that line is telling you what is the maximum magnitude which this source have produced in past for up for which the data is available right so i repeat everything recurrence magnitude recurrence relationship is a relationship which you make for each seismic source from the past data of earthquakes for which are associated with that seismic source right so in one study area if we have uh, five sources and we have 50000 past earthquakes of all magnitudes all 50000s will be attributed to these five sources right so 10000 let's say each now for each seismic source we will construct this kind of a curve magnitude recurrence some sources will produce less earthquakes but more magnitude some will produce low intensity earthquakes but their number will be more so that information will be uh, captured in this graph the seismicity of each source will be captured so now you know that these are the seismic sources in my area and this this is the recurrence of each source third step is gmp i think that i have explained earlier also it is a graph between distance and the hazard parameter and uh, the magnitude it it will give you a different line for different magnitudes and the hazard parameter can also be any pga or any sa you when you make area sources and you are performing pssa for whole study region to construct a map in that case you will make sure that each point is in in any area source right so i just give you an example of this study area which have a b and c if you have an earthquake here also maybe very few you can make it a source d if you have few earthquakes here you make it a very big source e and similarly f and similarly e right so you will make sure that all the past earthquakes they are uh, in some source because if an earthquake occur in past which means that there is a source there right and it can occur in future also so you will not only consider uh, clusters of earthquakes as sources even if there are only few earthquake in particular uh, region of your study area and those are not accounted in any source you will make a source there right so actually it's practically dividing your whole study area into area sources so you you will divide your whole study area into different area sources 
and then uh, for example if your site is this one obviously the source a will govern the seismicity uh, in at this location but psha will not consider each source separately it will make sure that source a should have a more more contribution but if there is source f which is not that active but it will still have a small contribution in the in the hazard parameter at your site so psha will consider all sources and their relative occurrences their re relative activity rates they will be considered they will be combined to get a number at your site gmp is actually uh, is an equation actually but that equation have the the margin for error also in it because you know the past earthquake data which from which the gmp is constructed it will look like all these dots and overall the trend of those dots is that as the distance increase pga or hazard is reducing right so the researcher gives us the best fit line but that best fit line means that 50% of the data is still above that line almost 50% is below that line so if you just report the mean line as the gmp that that still means that it is a possibility that the gmp underestimate right so generally the gmps have that provision of error margin in them right so if a gmp gives you a mean line it will also give you a mean plus one standard deviation line mean minus one standard deviation line or mean plus two standard deviation line right so mean simply means that there is a 50% data which is above this line so if you want to be more conservative or sure use not the mean line but mean plus one sigma and sigma is calculated from that data for, from which the gmp is constructed so sigma uh, mean plus 1 sigma means 84 percentile which means 16 percent of the data is still above you if you me use mean plus 1 sigma then mean plus 2 sigma 95 percentile mean plus 3 sigma i think 99 percentile right so gmp is far more complex than that one small equation which i show you that is just for demonstrational purpose but but actually it is far more complex so that uh, provision of uncertainty is there in gmp so it's your choice you will say in psha that i don't want to use mean gmp line i want to use mean plus 1 sigma line or 2 sigma or 3 sigma right obviously the number predicted by gmp will be higher if you use mean plus 1 sigma or 2 sigma compared to mean now the last step is left how we analyze the step 2 and step 3 recurrence and gmp to construct this hazard curve at our site right so if we can do it for one site we can do it for thousands of site in your study area you can make a map so i'll explain that uh, last step and actually the the whole psha is this thing this last step because step 2 and step 3 becomes the input for that engine and finally that engine gives you this step 4 which is the hazard curve construction of hazard curve and it is very simple to demonstrate for one site i'll show you as using an example so first step defining of potential seismic sources second step defining the seismicity of those seismic sources third step selection of gmp fourth step determining the probability of exceedance for each site or constructing the hazard curve right this is fourth step